With the release of version 7, we have tried to improve our routing engine by implementing all the dynamic routing protocols from scratch, while also adding some long-awaited features and improving uh, the IPv6 stack. Maris, could you explain how this was possible? As you already know, we have moved to a newer Linux kernel. One of the side effects of uh, this move is that it came with a newer IP version 6 stack. Now compared to version 6, it has a lot of uh, problems fixed and also it will be more compliant with the RFC test. Also, the kernel update gave us possibility to set IP version 6 next hops for IP version 4 destinations. This feature is very helpful if you don't have IP version 4 addresses in your backbone, but uh, forwarding of IP version 4 is needed. Uh, with this approach, uh, it can be easily uh, done without creating any tunnels uh, and without wasting any IP version 4 or IP version 6 global addresses. And so, what are some of the uh, new features for IP version 6? Uh, some of the long awaited uh, features are policy routing, uh, recursive routing, ECMP, and finally VRF support. One very important routing uh, table difference between version 6 and version 7 is that uh, in version 6 you simply added mangle rule or uh, added the uh, route and specified uh, routing mark and routing table was created for you. Now in version 7 you explicitly need to create routing table and only then reference in your configuration. So and why was this new approach necessary? What is the benefit? Uh, one huge benefit of this approach is that uh, it will eliminate errors if a uh, table name was entered incorrectly, uh, which resulted in non-working configuration, or uh, probably because of typos, uh, all the routing table names were uh, hanging in the memory until a router was rebooted. Also, I've heard that there previously were some problems with huge routing tables. So has uh, this been improved in version 7, and how? Yes, probably one of the most annoying uh, things in router S was uh, waiting uh, uh, while print command is uh, printing out something. The reason for this slow speed was the uh, fact that um, console was asking uh, routing uh, process to send all the information and then uh, console processed the, the output. This leads to situation where if you have a very large routing table it could take up to 10 or 15 minutes on, or even more if you are not so lucky. Now uh, the difference is that uh, most of the filtering parameters are offloaded to uh, routing process itself. So console just asks uh, what it needs to receive and the uh, routing process is doing all the calculations. Uh, this uh, allowed us to increase speed from 10 minutes in version 6 to approximately 10 seconds in version 7. Now let's move on to dynamic routing protocols specifically. So what is new in this regard? Well, before we talk about uh, dynamic protocols itself, uh, one new feature is that now we have created a, a global router ID uh, typically, uh, you run a set of routing protocols in one instance uh, with the same router ID. In router version 6, uh, you had to change router ID separately for OSPF, BGP, LDP and so on. Uh, but now, now it's located in one place and it can be easily changed if for some reason you need to do it. Also, this new router ID is used to distinguish between uh, BGP instances, uh, which reflects in completely different uh, BGP configuration. Uh, but before uh, talking about BGP, let's uh, look a bit closer to OSPF. So in uh, OSPF, uh, now we don't have separate menus for OSPF version 2 and version 3. Configuration now is in a single menu, and to select which version you want to use, you simply specified in uh, instance configuration the version number. 
uh, network and the interface menus are also combined in single uh, interface template menu where order of entries are significant just like uh, firewall rules that they are processed from top to bottom and uh, first one that matches interface or uh, network will be used. Probably uh, most significant change in OSPF is that now it is a separate process. Uh, fixing uh, many uh, Rotorus uh, version 6 problems where OSPF could lose connection because of high load from other routing protocols, uh, missing routes and so on. So now let's talk about BGP, which was probably one of the most requested version 7 improvements. So what is new in BGP? Uh, long live in BGP problems starting with uh, slow convergence speed uh, to even randomly disappearing uh, BGP advertisements as well as new features uh, to keep uh, BGP protocol up to date uh, led to decision to rewrite uh, BGP completely from scratch. Uh, this allowed us uh, to significantly reduce memory consumption uh, improve overall performance and uh, implement uh, new frequently uh, requested features. And uh, this also resulted in a complete configuration redesign to accommodate these new features. Before we talk about uh, features, here is a small demonstration on how a quickly Rotor S version 7 BGP uh, can process 2.4 million roads. This is a very simple one router setup where the router receives almost uh, 600,000 uh, routes from four separate BGP peers. Also make sure to look at the available memory information on the screen. As it can be seen from uh, newly appeared uh, process monitor, uh, BGP is divided into multiple processes. Each peer now can have separate input and output uh, that way significantly improving performance on, uh, on router with uh, high peer count and high core count. Also take a look at the uh, memory usage now. You will see how little uh, memory was used uh, to store such uh, high amount of routes. It uh, took approximately 200 megabytes. If you're interested in more information about how multiprocessing works, we will leave a link in the description. But the previous uh, test setup only demonstrates pure BGP speed. It doesn't reflect a real-life scenario. So how about uh, BGP in real life? Uh, yes, so I have rigged a more advanced setup uh, where the same router is receiving uh, the same routes as is in previous setup, uh, but additionally a router connects to two more routers which are in interconnected uh, between each other forming the triangle setup. At the same time pushing uh, around 5 uh, gigabits of traffic to random destinations from one triangle side to another. Let's trigger a routing table recalculation by disabling enabling uh, upstream peers and see how much of our traffic will be dropped during convergence. Uh, this was a quite a problematic setup in uh, RotorOS version 6. Of course, it uh, does not reflect the real-life scenario either, but uh, it's a lot closer to show what you could uh, get out of from uh, RotorOS version 7 BGP. BGP performance uh, further can be tuned with uh, affinity control. It is uh, possible to set how BGP input and output will be delivered by separate processes. Uh, you can run everything in the main process, uh, run only input uh, in the main, and so on. Uh, since access of uh, shared memory between uh, multiple processes uh, can be very expensive, use of affinity makes more sense on low-core devices where you can reduce amount of total processes even to one process that were removing shared memory access penalties. Another performance tweak is early cut feature. Uh, what it does is uh, predetermines if a BGP update will be dropped uh, 
by remote peer and uh, simply doesn't send this update. For example, if a BGP AS pass contains remote peer's AS number, uh, such update uh, will be ignored in BGP output. So what about memory usage? Has that been improved? Uh, yes, already mentioned uh, memory usage improvements, like uh, 3.5 million uh, routes uh, using only 250 megabytes of RAM. Uh, another example is uh, if we compare to version 6, uh, for fun, I was uh, trying to load one BGP feed on uh, RB450 router, which has only 250 megabytes of RAM. On version 6, uh, struggling for uh, nine minutes, uh, router finally gave up and uh, rebooted with uh, out of memory. If we compare it to version 7, loading of routes took approximately two minutes and uh, at the end we got uh, 120 megabytes uh, of free RAM. So this is good news for people using older devices. Uh, as you can see, RB450 is still supported in version 7 and is even faster than before. I would say that it's uh, quite a difference. Also, already mentioned the uh, road process monitoring tool, in addition to uh, memory usage, CPU usage, and uh, other useful info you can uh, kill unwanted processes. While beta testing version 7, some users complained that parts of BGP configuration is gone. What about that? Uh, well, we got to the fun part where probably most of the hardcore BGP users that are used to all configuration will be very confused because uh, configuration has changed uh, significantly. Uh, biggest change is that uh, instance and peer configurations are completely gone. Uh, now we have uh, new menus. Uh, one is uh, BGP connections, another is uh, BGP templates. Uh, you can call entries in uh, BGP connections like uh, connection matchers or connection initiators. Uh, it acts as connection initiator in case if you specify a single IP address and uh, it is not uh, set to be the passive. Uh, templates contains uh, common parameters that will be used for selected BGP connections. Uh, this approach uh, was made because of uh, dynamic uh, peer support. What this uh, allows us to do, for example, is uh, set uh, network range to listen to and connect remote peers based on uh, template parameters. This is called dynamic peer configuration. Uh, BGP instance now can have parameters derived from uh, common templates. Also, it allows us to set a, a chain of uh, several templates uh, with common parameters. And the last one is uh, uh, BGP now can guess uh, remote AS uh, number from open message, so you simply don't need to uh, specify it in configuration. Uh, it can be used only for security reasons if you want to make sure that uh, open message is, contains the correct AS number. For example, we know that our AS number is 10, so let's add this number to our default uh, template configuration. We have also a set of peers that should be multiple hops away. So we can create a new template named uh, multi-hop group and specify a template to inherit from. In this case, uh, we are using default. Now we can create uh, two connection entries, one with default template and another one with a multi-hop group template for multi-hop peers. Another configuration option that people could not find is BGP networks. So where has that been moved? BGP networks are not gone. It's now a parameter in BGP templates and can be set as an address list. Uh, now you uh, simply add the address list and specify all the networks that you want to advertise in that particular address list. Also, it is important to remember that synchronized option that was in version 6 are now gone. Now BGP takes entry from address list, checks if corresponding route exists in routing table, and only then tries to advertise it. 
uh, if we look closer at uh, template uh, parameters, we can see that in addition to input filters, now we have uh, also input accept uh, parameters. What this does is uh, match and accept BGP update messages directly before it's even processed uh, by the main uh, BGP process. This could uh, allow to boost performance and significantly reduce memory consumption uh, in cases if you know that uh, you don't need the route in routing table. Since there is no possibility to drop uh, routes in regular filters, these basic filters can be used uh, to drop unwanted uh, routes from the routing table. So you mentioned uh, basic uh, filtering uh, features of the templates, but what about uh, regular BGP filters? What is new in that regard? Those routing filters are completely redesigned too. Since we uh, implemented a lot of new features there, uh, configuration need to be changed a lot. So for example, uh, now we have large community support, ability to match more than just a routing target in uh, Extended communities filter can access uh, BGPP parameters like uh, local and remote AS numbers. We can also uh, create uh, community and number uh, lists uh, to match against. And the very important feature asked uh, a lot was that now you can add, subtract and replace uh, number parameters. For example, if you had a if you have OSPF metric, you can simply add it to, to BGP local preference. Some important things about uh, a new routing filter syntax is that now uh, one routing filter entry can have only one uh, set property, which means that if you want to change uh, multiple parameters, you will have to divide this filter in multiple entries. Multiple uh, filter entries Without actions are stacked in a single rule. The reason for this change is that the uh, order of parameter sets is very important, and writing one parameter set per line allows uh, for easier understanding from top to bottom on what actions exactly were made. And lastly, the frequently asked uh, feature is uh, route origin validation, also called as RPKI. Uh, RotorOS implements RTR protocol which uh, sends a list of prefixes and uh, originator AS numbers. Uh, based on this information, RotorOS can uh, determine whether AS pass of the prefix uh, contains originator AS number and sets the correct flag whether it's uh, whether the route is invalid, valid or uh, information is unknown. And uh, this flag further can be used in uh, routing filters to drop or reject or do whatever you want. These were some of the most important changes in version 7 routing, but we also have made a special page in our documentation where we will list these and other changes in version 7, also BGP and other routing protocol uh, improvements, uh, speed tests and other information. We'll put uh, the link to this documentation page in the description of this video. So you can already download Router OS version 7. It's available as a beta version. You can install it in a virtual machine or upgrade uh, one of your test routers and see how well it works for you and try out the new configuration options.